The Minnesota Territory, 1850. Population, 6,000 brave and lonely souls. They were emigrants building a new life out of sweat, muscle, and determination. Part two of an American epic, The New Land. Tonight at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on the American Broadcasting Company. New York. This is ABC News. Now, Harry Reasoner. Good evening. There were funerals in both Israel and Uganda today, the results of Israel's weekend raid to rescue more than 100 hostages from pro-Palestinian hijackers at Enneby Airport in Uganda. But there were other results, too, from the rescue operation, which has been hailed as audacious and as a blow to terrorists around the world. Israel is keeping some of the details secret. But it's known that three American-made transports flew two and a half thousand miles to Uganda, carrying Israeli commandos armed and ready for combat. In 36 minutes, they killed seven hijackers and 20 Ugandan soldiers, reportedly also destroying MiG fighters of the Ugandan Air Force. And they helped the hostages to the waiting planes and took off for Nairobi in Kenya. There they were refueled, sent their wounded to a hospital, and took off again for the long flight back to Israel. Three hostages lost their lives, along with the commanding officer of the raiding party, but most reached Israel in safety. Seventy-one were Jewish, some Israelis, there were some French nationals, including the crew of the hijacked Air France jet. Andrew Mizell's reports on today's memorial services. Two of the four Israelis who died during the daring rescue operation in Uganda were buried today. The funerals were a sobering reminder of the price that had been paid for the freedom of 104 other hostages. These arrived here yesterday to a joyful welcome. Here is one of them, Mrs. Janet Almog, originally of Madison, Wisconsin. Today, after 24 hours to relax and reflect, I spoke to Mrs. Almog. Janet, was there any collusion between the hijackers and Ugandan President Idi Amin? There most definitely was. Uh, we were not in Uganda by chance. When we arrived in Uganda, the terrorists were met by other terrorists as well as uh, men from Uganda. They had uh, weapons waiting for them, they had clothes waiting for them. It was very obvious that it wasn't by chance that they found an African country to land in, that it was planned ahead of time that we should go to Uganda. Other freed hostages described the drama of the lightning Israeli rescue operation. A few friends and I uh, were sitting and playing bridge, and uh, we were, I think, the only people uh, not sleeping at the time. Um, then I uh, looked out to the front and I uh, saw some, some shooting and the first thing I did is I told my friends on the bridge table, let lie, lie down on the ground fast. So we lay down and the shooting went on. Uh, I tried to, uh, to raise a little bit my head and see what's going on. And at the beginning, I saw more and more shooting. I heard some people crying, maybe people injured, and I, don't, I heard this. And then I watched somebody, like an angel, I really think it's like an angel, somebody jumping into the, our, our room like this. And he looked up, something like this. And it was really something, an angel. And he uh, came down, took a uh, loudspeaker in his hand, and started to talk in Hebrew and say, you everybody, don't move and lie on the ground, on the floor. One of the Israelis buried today died on the very edge of freedom. She was Mrs. Ida Borovich, 56, an immigrant from the Soviet Union. Mrs. Borovich suffered a fatal heart attack at Entebbe Airport as she ran for one of the rescue planes that flew the hostages out of Uganda. Andrew Mizell's ABC News, Tel Aviv. The 20 Ugandan soldiers and seven hijackers killed in the raid were buried in Kampala in Uganda today, and President Amin proclaimed two days of mourning. 
Israel has reportedly placed its forces on an increased alert in case of reprisals. President Amin has threatened, as he put it, to redress the aggression. He has complained about the raid to United Nations Secretary General Waldheim. Reaction from the Third World and the Organization of African States has been hostile. John Scally reports on the diplomatic consequences. It is quite possible that an overwhelming majority of members of the United Nations Security Council will condemn Israel for the way it rescued its hostages. It is even conceivable that the United States will avoid vetoing the denunciation although President Ford publicly congratulated Israel yesterday for the success of its unprecedented raid. However, Uganda can successfully prove that in so doing, Israel flagrantly violated Uganda's territorial integrity and sovereignty. This cardinal rule of international law is enshrined in the United Nations Charter, and Secretary General Waldheim has to uphold it no matter how noble the motive of the transgressor. Privately, there is no question but that Waldheim is pleased because for years he has appealed unsuccessfully for stern action against hijackers. He can't say publicly, however, that in this case, the end justified the means. Any more than Kenya, which is now denouncing the Israeli action, can acknowledge it cooperated with Israel to stage the raid. Such are the ways of international diplomacy. John Scalley, ABC News, Washington. Because of diplomatic problems, Israel will not disclose the route taken by the rescue planes on their flight to Uganda and is withholding many other details of the operation. Also tonight, Sam Donaldson on Jimmy Carter's search for a running mate, Bill Redeker on New York the day after, and a special wrap-up of yesterday's birthday party. The Boris. The Boris. The Boris. Honey, where did you pack the Lavoris? There was no Lavoris to pack. Oh, come on. I, I had some right before I left. You went to the dentist right before you left. You're right. My mouth felt clean and fresh, and my breath, terrific. More dentists use Lavoris than any other mouthwash. And that's good enough for me. Me too. Mother's amazing. She still insists on doing the shopping, even when her arthritis flares up. I worry about her. But I must say, Bufferin helps. Studies compared to Bufferin, Bayer, and Anison. On the average, in the first minutes, Bufferin put much more pain reliever in the bloodstream than Bayer or Anison. And only Bufferin has stomach protection ingredients for temporary relief when minor arthritis pain flares up. Bufferin. Jimmy Carter, who has enough delegates pledged to win the Democratic presidential nomination, met today with the first of at least five potential running mates. Carter's visitor in Plains, Georgia, was Senator Edmund Muskie of Maine, twice governor of his state, the vice presidential candidate in 1968, a contender for the nomination in 1972. Sam Donaldson has details on today's meeting. Jimmy Carter and Ed Muskie walked the streets of Plains today. They did not exactly walk alone. But then the business part of the visit, the three or four hours of private talk about the vice presidency, had already taken place. Now Carter was introducing Muskie to the tourists, Muskie happy to oblige all requests for pictures. Carter displaying his campaign style, Muskie discreetly hanging back so as not to risk hogging the spotlight. Both men inspecting the suddenly becrutched Jody Powell, Carter's press secretary, who sprained his ankle while leaping for a football. Finally, as Muskie departed from the grass airstrip outside of town, the two saying nice things about each other to reporters without making any firm commitments. Can you tell us about your meeting? The governor never having been in Washington is, uh, I found, has a deep interest in uh, how he can best uh, develop a relationship, a productive and constructive relationship with the Congress. Well, Senator, uh, may we assume that if you are asked, you would accept? Well, my view uh, of, of this is that uh, I don't make any decisions until the governor has made a decision. Oh, you, governor, may we, may we assume that Senator Muskie leaves here not to eliminate it in your mind? Well, that's certainly right, yes. I, I will wait until after, uh, as I say, another week, at least before I make up my mind. But uh, there's been a very good relationship between us, and I, I don't think there's any incompatibility at all, but I, I just uh, want to keep an open mind about the future, and so does Senator Muskie. Senator, you one down, at least four more to go. Of such drama is the vice presidential nomination made. But what else is there for the Democratic Convention? 
Sam Donaldson, ABC News, Plains, Georgia.